Um, I would say be open, be honest, and be congruent. Um, we don't all know terminology. Terminology is evolving so fast that we can't all expect to keep up with every new development. And if we are just honest with ourselves and honest with everyone else, of going, I might not know how to phrase this, and I might be making an absolute sour ear of it, but I am trying. And then it's really, it's, it would be my responsibility to partake of that education. And it's not my place to educate you, but it's my place to facilitate and to nurture you to educate yourself. So I guess it would just be honesty and openness would be my pointers. Awesome. Thanks, Alex. Um, I think uh, I think what I've said, like, don't shy away from it. Like, talk about your whiteness if it's relevant. Um, I think it's really important that white therapists and anyone who want to wants to call themselves an ally create white spaces or white solidarity networks to have those conversations amongst white people so people of colour aren't educating, as you say. You really need to work through your white guilt and your white shame. It's there, it's gonna suck, but you need to work through it. Um, and that's gonna be a constant process as well. It's like co constant conversations. Um, and lastly, Dr. Isha Mackenzie Mavinga has written an amazing book called Black Issues in the Therapeutic Process. Um, and has some awesome case studies and pointers at the end for therapists and what to do and how to kind of really deal with those things. Um, it's really worth a read. If you can't afford it like I can, then you can find some previews on Google Books or Amazon or something like that. Um, lastly, um, try not to have a colorblind approach. Um, one of my um, classmates who's white said that and I thought, well, yeah, it would be really fucking, sorry, really nice, <laughs> sorry for sorry. Um, it would be really lovely if we had the colorblind approach and we didn't have to see color and in the, very, in the therapist's room, it's just us two, but that's not real, like it's not, it's not society. You're just going to ignore that person's race or experience completely. Um, yeah, just try and be realistic and open, but thanks for asking the question. Um, I have a bit of a split response, I think. Um, because there is something about responding to the tips, if you like, but that could potentially have a bit of a, I have an agenda approach. Um, and so perhaps, yes, there is, you could say, there's something about naming the, the difference in the room or naming the power dynamics that potentially are in the room but I think there is also something about dropping into the feelings that are in the room what's going on in your body when you are with this trans client I think you were asking about what are the feelings that perhaps that they are hinting at but perhaps not necessarily wanting to explore perhaps what are the daydreams and the fantasies that are occurring what are we're willing to talk about in our supervision spaces as well, in a way in which then might influence the practice that's in the room. Because if we go through the top tips, there's like a bit of a head response. And something tells me that that is where it's a bit of a, I'm using my words a little bit, and perhaps that's because I'm also speaking from ahead. So there's something about dropping down into heart. here in this room right now, when I'm speaking, I notice this. That would be a starting point. What is it like for me as a black male therapist or a man therapist in this room, in this space, at this time? Some of it's frightening. We have a way in.